Welcome to Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventures. I'll be your host today. My name is Sarah with an H, and I'll be talking to you about Southwest Florida seashells. Let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel and follow us on social media to see our daily finds. On our shelling tours, we like to give the shell and tell presentation, which is a simple display of some of the common seashells you might find on your tour. Out here, there are 300 species of mollusk or more, but we've selected a couple collectible ones to show you so that you'll know what to look for as you go. I'll start with this one. This is a lightning whelk. It's very easy to remember which one this is because it's the only one that spirals to the left. Every other shell out here that's a gastropod will open on the right side. This one opens on the left. So if you're a lefty, this is the shell for you. Now the females of this species can get very large. Here's an example right here. Now, the females can go up to be the size of a football, maybe even bigger, and in the winter we, we find lots of egg casings washing up on the beach. Very beautiful shells. Ask your shell guide where the best place is to look for the large shells and we'll help you out. Another whelk is the pear whelk. This is a cousin species. Obviously it opens on the right and it has a little different pattern on it. Not as many spikes either. Now something else people come out here looking for is the cones. We have a Florida cone here. It's got yellow and orange, maybe some splotchy patterns on it, but the one that has the prettiest design, in my opinion, is the alphabet cone. The alphabet cone is particularly collectible because every one of these is going to have a letter of the alphabet on it. So if you look in the hieroglyphs, you'll be able to see a letter, maybe a number. It's, it's kind of up to your imagination. But these are kind of hard to find, so even if you find a piece of one, I would still keep it. It makes a nice little treasure. Of course, we do find lots and lots of sand dollars. Be sure to check and make sure you're not taking a live sand dollar and putting it in your bag. If you have questions about that, be sure to ask your shell guide when you come. Another common shell we see a lot is an auger. This is also called a unicorn horn if you're under the age of 10. They're super popular and very common on the Florida beaches, so keep your eye out for these rolling in the surf. They like to roll around. This one is one of my favorites. This is called an angel's wing. Angel's wings are very fragile, so if you find one that doesn't have a crack or a hole, I would definitely keep it separate from your other shells. It will get smushed in your bag pretty quickly. So uh, this is a large one. We find them all sizes. I would definitely uh, keep that separate. Maybe bring a box for your sand dollars and angel wings and other fragile things. That's something we would recommend. Now we have lots of murexes out here. This is another favorite of mine. The murexes have lots of texture and lots of spines. This one here is a lace murex. It reminds me of a wedding dress, lots of loops on it. They're typically white or beige. And then we have the cousin, the apple murex. And it's got a lot of color, it's got lots of um, texture, but not as many spines as the lace murex. So both are still pretty collectible. Another fragile shell you want to watch for is a paper fig. This is a, a very thin, again, very fragile shell, so another one you'll want to keep safe and put in your box, especially if you find a whole one with no uh, damage to it. Definitely keep that safe. Now, we have several tulips. This is a banded tulip. We love these. These are typically a purple or pinkish color, and they've got those really defined brown or black stripes around the belly. The other one is a true tulip. Now, this one's orange, but we do find true tulips that are red, brown, sometimes black, that's particularly collectible. And true tulips can grow much larger than the banded tulips. That would be a very special treat though. These are a little harder to find. So another way you can tell the difference is the true tulip also has a texture to it. If you rub your fingernail down the side, you'll notice it has some ridges and the banded tulip is smooth. So keep your eye out for those. Of course, in uh, this area especially, we have lots of beautiful scallops. Orange is probably one of the favorite colors. Uh, but the rare scallop you want to look for is a flat one. 
The flat scallop, also called a zigzag scallop, there's a few variations of them, are very hard to see. Once they wash up on the shore, they lay flat against the sand and then they get buried almost right away. So it's a little challenging to find them and when we do, we definitely celebrate with you because it's a special find. So keep your eye out for the little fan-shaped stamps in the sand, maybe partially buried. If you tell your brain to look for jingle shells, that might help you. Now, this one is a really cute tiny shell. This is a nutmeg. This is a really dark one, but they can have white and brown patterns on them. And they have kind of a plaid texture, like a crossbar. So these are something we love finding out here. It's a little challenging to find them because of their size, but usually you'll find them rolling around in the surf at the base of the dunes. So keep your eye out for those. This one reminds me of curly fries. This is a worm snail. We find these a lot on mangrove islands or places with lagoons. And we also have some moon snails. This is a shark's eye. And then its cousin, the gaudy nautica. Now these guys are usually upside down. They're a little top heavy. So if you look for the white swirl on the bottom of them, you'll see them a little bit easier. Here's one of the minis that I love. This is called a top snail. The top snails look like little Hershey Kisses. They are super cute and they're usually a honey brown color, but we see them sometimes in like a raspberry dark brown color as well. So keep your eye out for those. Here we have an olive. This is a lettered olive and the rare version of the lettered olive is the golden olive. So if you're an olive collector, go through your, your specimens and see maybe you have a yellow one. If you find a butter yellow golden olive, that is a very rare find. It's the same species as the lettered olive, but think of it like a recessive color morph, like a red hair and green eyed person. It's kind of hard to find. So if you do find one of those on our tour, be sure to tell your shell guide because they're definitely going to want to take a picture of it for you. That's definitely a treasure right there. Now, I think we have also the Florida horse conch. This is the bright orange one. This one is the Florida state shell. So uh, it's pr particularly collectible here. And when they're little, they're really bright. And when they're older, they turn into this beige color. Now keep in mind, if it's been in the ocean for a while, when you first find it, it's gonna have some barnacles and maybe some growth on it. But when they clean up, they clean up really nice. Now, this is the second largest predatory sea snail in the world. So these get really big. This one's a pretty good size, uh, but the largest one ever found is 24 inches in length. And it is on display at the Sanibel Shell Museum in Sanibel Island. I definitely recommend going and looking at it if you get a chance. Uh, the, the huge shells, like I said, you'll have to talk to your shell guide because every island has a different corner where we'll find them the most. So uh, definitely ask lots of questions when you go. So. Do you recognize this one? This is a Genonia. The Genonia is the golden egg of all shelling. It's one of the rarest shells you can find, and what makes it rare is that it's a deep sea snail. It lives at a depth of 120 feet or deeper. So, in order to find one, you've got to comb the beaches for hours, most of the time. These guys take a long time to wash up on the shore. We often find them after storms, especially hurricanes. But anyway, if you find one, it is a very special treat in the Sanibel Island. They used to put you in the newspaper for finding one. And down here, treasure seekers will issue you a special certificate for finding one on our tour. So keep your eye out for the giraffe pattern. That's what you really want to look for. Most of the time, they're going to be partially visible. Sometimes they're buried in the sand. Sometimes they're rolling in the water. We've even found them up here, up high on the dunes, buried in the bushes. So keep our eye out for that spotted pattern. Most of our shells in this area are going to have a rich fall color. So oranges, browns, purples, pinks, those are the kinds of things you want to look for in addition to patterns, stripes, spots, spikes, that kind of thing. So as you go about your tour, make sure you talk to your shell guide about what to look for and take their advice because they know where the good spots are. That's it for today's episode on Southwest Florida Seashells. Don't forget to follow us online and subscribe to follow all of our new adventures. Happy shelling!